but we say CAF is the new quality and governance of public administration. This is uh, very important uh, from our side. Um, you know CAF, the abbreviation, you will hear today C-A-F, you will hear, hear CAF, you will hear CAF, uh, whatever. Um, it's in the end, it's the European Common Assessment Framework for better quality and governance in public administration. Common, yeah, it's ours, it's a European tool, commonly developed. Common also means uh, in the organization, because we are talking about improving the organization, public sector organizations, in the organization, common means it's done together by the staff and the leadership. Uh, that's very important from our, for, from our side. Meanwhile, we also say it's done together also with the important stakeholder of the organization. Um, assessment, that's what we do. We do a self-assessment and framework is we provide, we provide a European agreed, uh, agreed a framework uh, for further developing public sector organizations. And this is very important for us. And this is why we are also a CAF believer, uh, because it's not easy. It's done. It's discussed by all the EU member countries. Meanwhile, also with our observers, we are very happy about it. Um, we are very happy about it uh, with our observers and uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and and have a framework, a common framework, how to further develop. Yeah, so uh, CAF is the European model for improving quality and governance of public sector organizations. Easier said, it's a um, questionnaire with 200 uh, questions. So, I mean, that's also what we want. We want to have an easy tool, easy to implement tool. So you also can say it's a kind of questionnaire with 200, about 200 questions for further improving uh, the, uh, the organization. It's based on a new culture, on a new culture of consensus in the organization. Uh, of openness, transparency, and trust. Uh, you cannot do CAF without openness, transparency, uh, and trust in the organization. It will not succeed. Um, so CAF is on the one side the tool to uh, develop and uh, foster trust, transparency, but on the other side, it's also based on that. Uh, our overall goal is to contribute to good governance. We want better public sector organizations, and we want better public administration in general. Um, important for us is that we are not the only one, of course, who uh, are working on public sector uh, further development. No, there are many, uh, many um, organizations, uh, many approaches, uh, many approaches, with, and that is, therefore it's very important to know what we did when we developed CAF 2020. Um, we uh, were focusing very much on what is the United Nations doing or what are the countries of United Nations doing with the Sustainable Development Goals, for example. Yeah. And uh, there are also the principles of effective governance based on the Sustainable Development Goals coming from the United Nations. Of course, we focused what the European Commission is doing, yeah? mainly with the toolbox for quality in public administration. I hope um, this is well uh, a well-known um, uh, yeah, toolbox, uh, which can be used to, uh, from, a, from everyone in seeing what are good ex experiences, good practices uh, in further developing public administration. Of course, we were focusing on what is OECD doing. Uh, on the one side, Sigma OECD with the principles of public administration for, um, uh, uh, for EU accession countries mainly. Um, but also what OECD is doing in the sector of public governance, of innovation, uh, and also uh, the public sector uh, observa public sector innovation or observatory. And what are the results and learnings from IPA, especially EPSA, yeah? the European Public Sector Award. So these were, let's say, this is the, was the framework of uh, what we used for further developing CAF. And it was done by a huge group. Uh, I don't. I cannot say thank you to to all of them, but please have a look. We started in September 2017, uh, and we ended in November 2019. So we had a two years uh, workshop, working group uh, uh, phase on further developing uh, the CAF 2020. And in fact, it was the whole UPAN CAF network contributing to the further development of CAF. And this is the main value also of. Uh, 
um, of CAF. In my personal uh, view, which which I discuss, of course, with my colleagues here in the in the CAF center of KDZ, uh, CAF is much more than just a quality model. Yeah, we go from a quality management and a quality model to change and organizational development. That has to be clear. Those who are doing CAF, they change their org organization. They focus on their organizational development and they are in a change process. That's for sure. Um, also, similar to EFQM, I'm now using words without introducing, uh, introducing it, but I guess many of you know it, EFQM, the European Found Foundation for Quality Management. Similar to that, we are going from a quality model to a management system with CAF. Yeah. Having a broad uh, umbrella of what an organization has to do, how an organization has to, um, has to perform. And it goes from an internal focus of organization towards public administration reform. CAF contributes on the big picture to public administration reforms in the countries and speaking for Europe, also uh, in the European Union uh, in, in general. The new CAF, and I said I will just shortly introduce the CAF, uh, but I want to focus on what is new in our view. Please remember six focus areas are new on CAF. Uh, this is first the digitalization, secondly the agility, uh, third, um, uh, uh, third the innovation, which has been further developed. Innovation was of course in CAF uh, already before. Uh, fourth the sustainability uh, with the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals as leading principles. We say no public sector organization, no public sector policy should be uh, existing anymore without a reference to the SDGs. That is what CAF is saying. Managing diversity as fifth point uh, key area and collaboration as also further development of uh, maybe a more narrow view on uh, participation. So these six focus areas we have now new in CAF and this is what I want to do. I want to, of course, show this, um, uh, this, uh, this focus areas a little bit more in depth, but before, what is CAF? Uh, as a model, how do we think? We want to achieve results. We want to achieve good results, excellent results and impacts in public sector organizations. This is what CAF is, is all about. We want to have excellent impacts and results. Yeah. And this is what we are doing. We measure this uh, in the focus of the customers and citizens. This is very quality management oriented, huh? focusing the organization, further developing the organization in the view of citizens and customers. Uh, we do it for the staff, for the people, for the employees. Huh? We want to have also uh, achieving uh, good results and impacts on a social responsibility. We have, um, a responsibility for society, uh, much more in public sector than in private sector. Uh, so CAF is also focusing on the social responsibility of the organization. And last but not least, I mean, of course, our key performances. Uh, how many uh, building permissions have been done? What is the quality of the education uh, of the school? Um, these are the key performances uh, of the um, of the of the organization and how is how do we achieve good results in improving the leadership in improving the strategy uh, the planning in improving the partnerships the partners the uh, uh, also the budget the knowledge uh, of the organization we call it resources the staff uh, of course we want to have good trained staff of course we want to have uh, um, uh, talented uh, innovative uh, staff um, and of course, we want to have high performing stuff. Huh? So this is, of course, what CAF is focusing, uh, focusing about. And last but not least, the processes, huh? how to make then an organization uh, achieving good results, of course, with the processes and procedures of the organization. So this is the CAF, uh, what we are doing. And we do that with kind of uh, questionnaires. Huh? We have some, we have principles, uh, criteria for each of these um, um, of, of these, um, of these, we call it enablers and uh, results. Um, and with improving that, yeah, 
we further develop the public sector uh, organization. So this is our spirit. This is our idea behind it. This is what we implement in all public sector organizations from Portugal uh, to uh, to Poland, uh, from Finland, uh, from Finland to Italy. Uh, not easy to have different administrative cultures uh, uh, and let's say one common framework. It's not easy, but it's worse to do that uh, because it's worse that they can compare to bench learn from each other. Um, and this is our spirit and this is uh, what we are doing. So here you have the model. I hope many of you or most of you uh, know it. We will not go into details of that, but some, some examples. What does it mean now when we say there are six focus areas, six new focus areas, digitalization? What does it mean? It means now new. We focus very much that the digital, the aspects of digital transformation are in the strategy, that the leadership yeah, uh, of the organization has also the capacities to work on digitalization, yeah, being also a role model for it. Um, it means a new new means of communication, which have to be included uh, in into the uh, into the organization. And this is also why I'm very happy that we have today so many participants using a new format, a new means of communication, this virtual conference. Um, of course, we have to focus on more on transparency, on data protection, on cyber uh, security, on a new kind of knowledge management, uh, digital knowledge management. Uh, and last but not least, digitalization means also um, a challenge for uh, the skills, a challenge uh, for the uh, for the employees, uh, because we have new working conditions, we need new skills, we need new experiences. And uh, when you see, I have here put also a small sign with the earth and the mask on the earth, which 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 is now, let's say, unfortunately, uh, what we are all um, um, are working on, which is uh, the the COVID crisis, the pan the pan uh, the, the consequences of the pandemic. Um, uh, but it also is an, a sign for uh, all the uh, global challenges, hmm, which CAF is now also uh, re reflecting. Um, and when we see uh, that CAF focuses on new working, we always were focusing on the question of how to work from home, how to work uh, on a digital uh, on a digital basis. This was always done with CAF, uh, and how to make the skills for that. Um, then we see that those who are using CAF are, in my view, also better prepared for crisis uh, and uh, like we have here now. Huh? Uh, nobody expected, for, fortunately or unfortunately, nobody expected the COVID crisis. Huh? But we, of course, uh, we are working with the expect the unexpected uh, all the time, especially concerning climate change or when you remember also the migration crisis, which uh, um, was uh, very much on focus in the last uh, in the last year. First part, first key uh, area: digitalization. Second one: sustainability. I mentioned already. CAF focuses now on the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. Huh? Um, CAF opens up and says a strategy, a planning needs to focus on the global challenges. What can be the impact of the organization? Expect the unexpected. Huh? CAF focuses in the question of sustainability and the life cycle management for buildings, for, for example, but also for the products and pro, uh, of the of the um, of the organization. Sustainability means also rule of law. Unfortunately, getting more and more important. Huh? We didn't expect that we have to talk about it so much, but it is um, based on rule of law. We are able uh, to have and. Uh, less conflict of interest, anti-corruption, uh, and we are able to perform a better uh, economic uh, support uh, for our for our societies. Social responsibility uh, and integrity and ethics, which we have now really more focused in the CAF 2020. Next point is agility and innovation. Um, agility when we made the CAF in 2013, or at least it was done already before 2012, 11, 12, huh? uh, the term agility didn't exist in our, let's say, in our world. It more it came more from the uh, IT, uh, from the IT spectrum. Meanwhile, we all have to be agile and are working on that. And of course, 
uh, CAF uh, reflects that. So you find now also the, the issue of what, what does innovation mean? What does skills of the employees, but also of the leadership mean? Uh, what do processes mean to be agile, flexible, resilient, huh? to be, um, yeah, to be adapted uh, quickly to the uncertainty which we are which we are focusing which we are focusing uh, on uh, on it. Um, we also focus more than before on the working across borders, getting out of our silos. Honestly, this was also part of CAF 2013, but not in this intensity. We're getting out of silos means getting out of the silo in your organization, uh, in the departments but getting also out of the silos in cooperating with other organizations, uh, with other levels um, in the state, but also um, with uh, working together between countries. Um, we think also that agility and innovation means to be prepared for public administration reform all the time. That's the, the basis, the foundation for being agile, innovative and able to uh, further uh, develop uh, the organization. You see on this uh, on the right side, attracting talents. We also further developed uh, our uh, view on uh, human resource management in CAF. Diversity. Um, diversity is interesting because it's also connected to the SDGs very much. Huh? When we say one world, uh, when we uh, when uh, when we when we mention inclusion, when we mention the social disadvantages. Huh? answering the social disadvantages, we are connected very much to, uh, to, uh, to the SDGs. As a good public sector organization, we always have to have in focus the uh, different needs of our customers, of our citizens. And we have to answer these different needs with very selective and individual, individual um, services uh, we deliver. And I'm convinced that this means that we are also answering the social disadvantages. Um, um, of course, for the development of gender mainstreaming and gender budgeting yeah, towards, uh, towards, uh, towards diverse, uh, diversity. In the human resource management, a new focus on recruitment, um, which means also fairness, neutrality, merit-based. Uh, some of you will say, ah, this is implemented in our country, it's not a problem. But it is worse to make a few on that uh, and it's, it's worse to have a, a deeper look uh, on, on, on that. How is the recruitment organized? Is it really fair? Is the neutrality um, uh, element uh, implemented properly? And do we have a merit-based recruitment and development, uh, human resource development uh, uh, process? Accessibility, equal opportunities uh, and treatment. Last but not least, collaboration. Collaboration, participation, a clear, the organization needs to open up. Uh, uh, public sector, public administration needs to open up more than we have done before. Opening up means also participation with citizens and civil society organizations and civil society uh, itself. You know, I'm a CAF guy. I know that also in the CAF 2013, we were very much focusing on the different stages of, uh, of, um, of participation. Um, co-decision, co-production, that was in CAF already. But now we go the further step towards collaboration, being open, having open data, uh, having open standards, seeing also that an, a, an understandable communication of the organization yeah, with easy language, for example, is something which is the basis uh, for uh, collaboration. And also the basis for collaboration is to accept that maybe a decision is done by citizens or by uh, civil society, maybe in another way or in a slightly other way than the organization itself would have done. Um, transparency. And when you remember before, or then this all comes to the, op to the main issue of trust, you know? public sector and public sector organization need to uh, be uh, more uh, trustful and need to engage more in, uh, in trust. So I'll come to an end because I want to give a floor to the discussion uh, and, and to, the, to the feedback uh, more and maybe also to other views. This is a picture I like so much um, because it was done 
uh, during the presentation of CAF 2020 at the UPAN, uh, the European Public Administration Network, already more than one year ago, uh, in the during the Finnish EU presidency, um, and um, during the presentation of me and uh, Timo Kunzi, who is also there today and will uh, also wrote an article in the book and will present it later on. Uh, we presented CAF together in this um, in this uh, UPAN network meeting, and at, at a vision drawer uh, made out this um, this uh, this nice picture out of our presentation, and I like it really very much. Bringing in one page everything I said um, I said before. So thank you very much for uh, listening.